untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Junt Collard or a Riveteer's Sacrifice deck built around a Riveteer's Ascendancy as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. An enchantment saying whenever you sacrifice a creature, you may return target creature card with a lesser mana value from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped and only happens once each turn. So we can also potentially activate this in the opponent's turn if we maybe have something like a Predator in play which allows us to sacrifice creatures at instant speed but uh, let's get started with our one drops where we've got Shambling Ghast and Voldaren Epicure. These are just good value creatures in the early game, play well in our sacrifice theme, especially Epicure making additional blood tokens to enable Blood Tithe Harvester, which we can then sacrifice to take out an opposing creature and with an ascendancy in play get back one of our various one drops at the same time. Also have two copies of Outland Liberator, one of the advantages of playing green in our red-black sacrifice deck is that we can now deal with artifacts and enchantments more easily and another great card to synergize with Ascendancy, also allowing us to get back our one drops, and something we can also activate in the opponent's turn. Then we've got two copies of a Riveteer's Requisitioner, just a fine 2-drop as a 3-1 that when it dies leaves behind a treasure token, but it also has Blitz for 2 in a red, allowing us to essentially play it, give it haste, and then sacrifice it end of turn, and when this creature dies we also get to draw a card. So if we Blitz our Requisitioner with an Ascendancy in play, not only do we get to draw a card and make a treasure end of turn, but we also maybe get back another 1-drop. And then two copies of Deadly Dispute as another instant speed way to sacrifice a creature, so we can also enable Ascendancy in the opponent's turn, good synergy with our various treasure tokens and blood tokens, which we can also maybe sacrifice. Then at three mana, two copies of a Demon's Disciple, which is a removal spell on a stick, which also plays well with Ascendancy, forcing each player to sacrifice a creature or planeswalker, so it can also sacrifice itself to maybe get back a two drop with Ascendancy in play. And same with Felstinger, a 3-2 Death Touch with Exploit, making us sacrifice a creature if we want when it enters a battlefield. And if we do, target player loses two life and draws two cards, so a nice source of card advantage. Can also sacrifice itself to get back a 2-drop. And Night Clubber, another creature with Blitz, giving all creatures the opponent controls minus one minus one until end of turn when it enters a battlefield. And then we also have two copies of Fable of the Mirror Breaker, not a creature we will be getting back from the graveyard with Ascendancy, but still incredibly synergistic in our deck, especially Reflection of Kiki Jiki, which can maybe copy some of our Blitz creatures, which will then also draw a card end of turn, and very powerful with cards like Workshop Warchief, a 5-3 Trampler gaining 3 when it enters, leaving behind a 4-4 Rhino token when it goes away, and can also be Blitzed for 6 mana, so copying this with a Reflection will still give us most of the benefits, and uh, just for 1 mana provides a ton of value and of course the war chief if we blitz it for six mana will also enable ascendancy and can maybe get back one of our four drops even and at four mana we have two copies of predator as we mentioned something that can also enable ascendancy in the opponent's turn gives it some nice built-in protection by sacking a creature giving it indestructible until end of turn and then at two copies of ajaxus the troublemaker which has similar vibes to the reflection of kiki jiki it's a little bit different, can also be blitzed for one and a red, so it's a four mana creature that we can potentially play for just two mana, getting back a three drop with ascendancy, so that's also a lot of value as we'll still draw a card end of turn as well. And then we can also pay a red mana, tap it and discard a card from our hand to create a token that's a copy of another target creature we control, gains haste and when that creature dies draw a card, so similar to blitz, and we have to sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step, can only be used as a sorcery. So Jaxus is also very synergistic with Workshop Warchief, and so let's say we have a war chief in play, we can blitz the Jaxus for one in red, another red mana to copy the war chief, make a hasty token, and then if we have an ascendancy in play, we can stack the end of turn sacrifice triggers in such a way that first the Jaxus dies, then the war chief token dies, and as a five mana card, it can get back a four mana card from our graveyard, so we can put Jaxus right back onto the battlefield after having blitzed it, so that saves us quite a bit of mana and just provides a ton of value. And then at the top end, we also have two copies of Girder Goons, which may seem like a strange inclusion as opposed to just playing four copies of Workshop War Chief, but the Blitz cost is only four mana as opposed to six, so a lot cheaper to get value of our Ascendancy and maybe get back a four or three mana creature. And then we'll also draw a card, maybe deal for damage and leave behind a tapped 2-2 rogue creature token. 
and then our mana base has a few creature lands which can also come in handy to close out the game and of course our tri land from streets of new capanna then two rockfall veil to death camp glade no red black dual lands since the early game we mostly want to play red and black lands and we also have the creature lands which we want to play early so it makes sense to have more of the green dual lands that we want to play starting turn three instead so yeah that's our deck now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does all right, we're on the play, and our hand seems keepable enough. Triple Harvester is going to deal with any opposing creature deck. And then we'll have six blood tokens total, so we can take out something pretty large. Turn one Shambling Gas from our opponents. We can maybe take out with a Night Clubber if we pick up a land. Gas attack, so heavily implying a Deadly Dispute. Could just block and trade, but we'll see what they decide to do here. Right, just another Shambling Geist. Fair enough. Another Night Clubber. So I'm tempted to wait on attacking and maybe trading until we get this Night Clubber down to kill the gas for free. And pass it back for now. Of course, double gas can take out one harvester, but it's still a fine exchange. So opponent is red black. Gets in there. And a gold hound. Yeah, more one toughness creatures we can kill here. Perfect. And I can either blitz night clubber or cast it. Kind of like blitzing one of them to draw a card. To maybe get closer to Warchief, and then we can also play this on green instead of black. Opponent with an Undying Malice. So Goldhound's gonna come back with a plus one counter. And Shambling Gas can decide whether they want to take out a Harvester or make two treasure. Opponent makes treasure. Could still kill the Goldhound here. Which seems reasonable. An attack for five. And we'll get to draw a card too. And our opponent does have a lot of mana, so something like Goldspan Dragon could show up, although we still have a Harvester in play to take care of that. And we're getting closer to Workshop Warchief. Would love to pick up an Ascendancy while we have all these. Blitz creatures in hand. Big score discarding Revelation. Serpent's trying to go big. Not sure what they're trying to ramp into. Null Priests for just two mana. Also dies to Night Clubber. So that seems like a fine play. And then we'll get our second green online. So yeah, Night Clubber putting in some nice work. Opponent's at 10. Can always use a blood token end of turn if we really want to. To try and hit that fifth land. There's also Requisitioner we could blitz to make a treasure. Alright, Blood on the Snow gonna wipe the board and get back. Probably a Null Priest. Sure. And then I'll sacrifice a blood token, discarding... Not sure what here. Maybe just a Requisitioner. And then next turn I could just play Felstinger, sacrifice it to itself to draw two. Yeah, that's fine. Ooh, there we go, Ascendancy. So now I might want to wait on sacrificing my own creatures until we get Ascendancy down. Alternatively, can just play Harvester, but that doesn't seem as efficient here. And then we don't have any one drops to get back either, so I'd rather sacrifice a Felstinger or Blitz a War Chief as opposed to sacking a Harvester. Opponent is down to one card in hands and a Revelation in the graveyard. Don't think we need to sack a Blood Token here. Ooh, Jaxus could be quite promising too, although only have single red, so can blitz and activate yet. 
So yeah, ton of options. I kind of like just Felstinger, sack to itself, draw two, get back Harvester perhaps. As opposed to playing a War Chief without blitzing it. And then we can play another Harvester from hand as well. Opponent could have removal and response, which was a reason to maybe play Harvester. So we still have something to exploit. Although we wouldn't be triggering the Ascendancy that way. So we'll do the drawing and get back Harvester. Alright, and then play out Liberator or Harvester. They're both good, but I guess given that we're stuck on single reds, I'll go with Harvester. Although if we expect some crazy enchantments or artifact to show up, could be nice to have the Liberator in play. So we're still missing a 1-drop to maybe recur when sacking our two mana cards. So that's something we might want to try and draw into. Discard's Awakening can get back a creature. Shambling Ghast. But yeah, they're still kind of missing some top end. Opponent could have some gold span dragons in there, maybe some planeswalkers, who knows. Null Priest could attack, since it's probably gonna die to our harvester. And there's a one drop to potentially get back. Second so Blitz, a workshop war chief, which would also get back like a Felstinger or a Night Clubber. That sounds pretty fun. So let's do that. Could also play War Chief as a normal creature and then try and blitz Jaxus next turn to copy it, which could also be quite effective. But let's keep it simple. And then do I attack with the entire team? Do we try and take out Null Priest? Yeah, I guess we'll just uh, attack with these two. And Harvester can kill Null Priest. War Chief triggers, and we'll get back Felstinger, and that can sacrifice itself or Harvester. Let's go with Harvester, and then Jaxus can maybe also copy Felstinger for value. So our engines are coming online here. Can also use Felstinger to maybe deal with the last couple points to finish off our opponents. Midnight Sky the play. Okay, so is there some way for us to present lethal? Very much possible. Blitzing another War Chief, never a bad idea. Felstinger could attack with trade for Shambling Ghasts. If I Blitz Jaxus, can copy Felstinger, and then... Jaxus, end of turn dying, would also get back a 3-drop potentially. So that could finish off a Midnight Sky if they block my 4-4 four four Rhino, for instance. But I think just casting a War Chief might actually be the best play. So next turn we can Blitz Jaxus and take it from there. So if I cast this, I can still play a 2-drop. And that should probably just be a Liberator. And then I don't think it's worth it for me to attack, because Felstinger would just trade for Shambling Ghast. Okay, and then next turn we'll have some hasty War Chiefs to hopefully close out the game. And can maybe get a second Ascendancy down. Okay, so we want more red mana. Play Ascendancy. And then, kind of hoping there's no instant speed spot removal for War Chief, but either way, this should be fun. Activate, discard a land. Discarding Epicure also reasonable, but can maybe deal one last point. Move to combats. Probably attack with everyone. Trap Breaker kills their treasure. 
And then end of turn we would trigger Ascendancy, getting back all sorts of goodies. Right, opponent can Graveyard Shift back Null Priest. That's fine. Part of me doesn't want the game to be over yet, so we can keep getting value from Ascendancy. But I don't think we'll get our wish here necessarily. Opponent gains two and ends up at exactly zero life. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's missing something cheap to sacrifice to deadly dispute, so it's kind of slow to get going. But um, I think it's still probably a keep since we've got a good mana base. And any of our one drops we can play on turn one, set up a deadly dispute. Turn one gold hound. And there's Epicure, perfect. Can either sack Epicure itself or the blood token. And sacking the blood token means we can keep the Epicure to sack to the Disciple later. Which is probably the preferred option here. So we'll pass it back. Don't think I would be playing anything of the treasure token if we draw into like a one drop. Another gold hound. Take one. Disciple not too impressive when facing a 1 1 first strike. Ooh, Shambling Ghast is nice. So, how do the triggers work here? We play Shambling Ghast, play Disciple. Both players sacrifice a creature, and then Shambling Ghast will finish off the second gold hound. Although they might have their own deadly dispute available. Yep. Alright, so not quite as impactful as it could have been. Opponent with a Zorn into Shambling Geist. Fable the draw. Although it feels like just playing Predator is going to be better for us. And then not super interested in attacking. Maybe should have played this on green since we have two dens in hand and might need double green for Workshop Warchief. Goldspan Dragon does not attack past Predator. Unless your opponent wants to send the team. But that works for me. So, unless they have an instant left, this works out pretty nicely for us. And I can even prevent the damage and then sack Apicure to Predator. And as the dust settles, we have a Predator, and our opponent has a Shambling Ghast. And don't think it matters here. Okay. Gold span down, opponent's left with two treasures. And a Night Clover deals with Shambling Ghast nicely. Could also blitz a Girder Goons, but let's get value while we can. And then to blitz or not to blitz. Kind of like having the 2-2 body in play to maybe sacrifice to Predator to protect it. Aha, uh -huh, opponent had an Infernal Grasp after all. Okay. That explains their line of play. And last turn they couldn't have cast Infernal Grasp since I could have sacked a second creature to give it indestructible in response. Now Hive gets in there. Okay, so we still have a game here. This turn, kind of like Fable, could also attack with Den of the Bugbear or Blitz a Girder Goons. Although we don't have an Ascendancy in play yet to get full value from it. So maybe get a Fable going. Could also keep Den in hand to discard to the second chapter since we already have one in play. 
And then I could also stay back to double block hive. Although racing is probably still fine too. Opponent may have a removal spell here, voltage surge. Okay. Surprised they didn't try and attack first, have me double block and then pull the trigger. Deadly Dispute's nice. So we'll get rid of Den and probably one Fable. Although I could also see just keeping both. Really want to dig for Ascendancy here. And then I could sack either Epicure or a Blood Token to Deadly Dispute. And now we've got our double green for Workshop Warchief. And then probably pass so I can maybe block and then Deadly Dispute. Although main phasing it to maybe draw into something we can play is also fine. Opponents got their own Deadly Disputes. See if they make a treasure. They do. So they keep the cards flowing. And there's a backup gold span dragon. Yeah, that's scary. So now we really want to find another one of our removal spells, like Demon's Disciple, Harvester. So Deadly Dispute, Sacking, probably the Epicure. Key Blood Token for additional card draw. Oh, there's Double Harvester. So that will eventually deal with Goldspan. I think I hang on to both. And then Reflection of Kiki Jiki, also an excellent combo with Harvester. And I'm probably fine keeping Proving Ground in hand to discard to a Blood Token. Or we can cycle it as well for 3 mana. And I'll still keep the Night Clubber back, even though I could be more aggressive. Just to have an extra blocker for Hive. Phase Breaker comes down. So Goldspan will make two treasure tokens, make that three. Okay. But yeah, next turn we can wipe the opponent's entire board with Harvester copied by Reflection, taking out double phase breaker and gold span if we want. But they can maybe use some of these treasures before that happens. And hopefully they don't find any spot removal. Another Hive. And I think I'm okay using a Blood Token. Two is still plenty. And I could see the Treasure Token being more important. Felstinger, not bad. And another Girder Goons. Okay. So we will copy Harvester right now. Now I could hang on to one of the Harvesters to keep copying it with Reflection in the future, which I kind of like. And then we'll just kill Goldspan and one Face Breaker. And maybe just play Girder Goons as a 5-drop, so we can block the various menace creatures here. And then uh, next turn we should be able to take over. Hive animates. Can get one last attack in, perhaps. Sends in Phase Breaker as well. Well, I could just block Hive and then let the Phase Breaker live with a plan of killing it with Harvester next turn. Opponent is at 15, so... Let's see, are they just dead if we copy Girder Goons and Blitz another one? Probably. So, maybe I'm fine just blocking the Phase Breaker at that point. So they won't be able to use their treasure tokens as effectively. Unless they drew another Infernal Grasp here. Right, opponent goes digging out of desperation. Finds a mountain. And, uh, yeah. It's gonna be a deadly dispute, sacking the Face Breaker instead. But now they appear pretty dead to... 
another blitzed Girder Goons. And the uh, War Chief is even better. Blitz, copy with reflection. Sort of treasure token coming in handy. And that's more than 15 damage, plus a ton of life, some rhino tokens, and some card draw. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems acceptable. Proving grounds, turn to Epicure. Good sacrifice fodder for Demon's Disciple. And there's Ascendancy, perfect. Opponent on blue red, so they may not have a ton of creatures. But Disciple also gets Planeswalkers for what it's worth. Make that Teamer instead. And Visionary, okay. Perfect victim for Disciple. Still need double reds to potentially Blitz Jaxus, unless we want to just cast it for four. Rebuke kills Disciple. Could just cast the Jaxus. Or we can play Ascendancy while the coast is clear and a tapped Hive. Can always discard Forest to our Blood Token as our opponent provides card advantage with Iteration. So not entirely sure what to make of our opponent's deck so far. Kind of a ramp value deck. Shambling Ghast. So, could get in there with Hive of the Eye Tyrant as well. Which is maybe not a bad idea. Since I'm not too interested in just playing Jaxus without having a plan to get immediate value. Alright, opponent's got a Fading Hope to bounce. In that case, we'll sack our Blood Token. And probably discard Shambling Ghast here. Picked up another one. As soon as we play Disciple, can sacrifice itself, get back a 1-drop from the graveyard. So that's a little bit of value. And Smoldering Egg, the perfect victim. Blitzing Requisitioner also gets back a 1-drop. But, uh... Yeah, I think... Going Shambling Ghast plus Disciples may be fine. And then we can keep Disciple in play to maybe combo with Jaxus. In case they maybe bounce their own Smoldering Egg. And then by making a treasure we'll have the double red to maybe Blitz and activate Jaxus. That worked. And play Hive. Okay. So we have yet to get value from Ascendancy, but we're slowly getting there. Another Visionary we can take out. Unless they kill Disciple. Alright, it's too bad. Ooh, Warchief. Warchief is exciting. Do we cast it, or do we Blitz it? If we Blitz, end of turn we'll get back Disciple, which kills Visionary, so then our opponent would just jump. And then I don't have to get Disciple back, I can just get something else. But if we play it, then we can maybe keep getting value with it with our Jaxus, which is a lot more exciting. So I think I'll try that instead. Of course they can pick up their Visionary in the meantime. But we'll see how this pans out. Right, another Strangle sadly kills it. Still leaves behind a 4-4, but Rebuke kills that as well. And now Visionary can activate, so it doesn't die to our Disciple, but at least we have Hive, which can clear some of the scarier cards out of the opponent's graveyard, like maybe an Expressive Iteration. So that seems acceptable. And play this on the red. 
do we play? Requisitioner doesn't seem needed. Might end up blitzing it instead. Get back one drop. Put in mill to windfall. That's another good one they could get back. Replays visionary, but now it's summoning sick, so it could die to a demon's disciple. So how do we accomplish that? If I blitz Jaxus, then it will die end of turn, trigger ascendancy, get back a three drop, and that gets disciple. And then in the meantime, can I put Jaxus to use is a question. I guess we can play Requisitioner and copy that. So yeah, that should work. Question is, do I want to Blitz Requisitioner or just play it? I guess since we're triggering Ascendancy with Jaxus, I'm probably better off just playing it. Other opponent could have all sorts of interaction to mess this up. But yeah, the important part here is that Jaxus gets sacrificed end of turn to the Blitz ability and gets back Demon's Disciple. And then we can attack with a Requisitioner, don't think our opponent's blocking. Right, they are. I guess they know about Demon's Disciple coming back. But now I can maybe get something else. Ooh, Predator, a nice draw. So finally getting value off Ascendancy. And Epicure might be the most interesting card now. So we've got a bit of Sacrifice fodder for Predator. Felstinger a nice draw as well. Okay. Opponent with Windfall end of turn. They had a safekeeping, but wasn't very helpful given we could make them sacrifice visionary. So three fresh cards in hand, one's a land, one's an iteration. Surprised they played a land first, but at this point iteration just wants to find two spells anyway. And one of them is a witness, as the future can shuffle some cards back and draw. That's fine. I guess they could also mess up our graveyard if they really want. And then we would love to find another Workshop Warchief, which gets back Hijaxus as a 4-mana card. Girder Goons, another 5-mana creature that we can maybe Blitz to get back a 4-drop. And there's another Visionary. Okay, I think we are fine to untap. Another Felstinger. So, step one, maybe Felstinger, sack Epicure, and see where that leads. And we will draw another Ascendancy. So, if I play Predator, then, yeah, I guess I could have potentially killed Visionary, if I want Predator into Stinger, sack Predator to get back our Demon's Disciple, but that didn't seem worth it necessarily. So instead we'll just play Predator and attack for three. And then we can apply quite a bit of pressure here. Opponent trades, that's fine. Uh -huh, and they've got a Snakeskin Veil. Yeah, that's fine. Interestingly, if I had played Predator before attacking, I could have sacrificed a creature to get back Shambling Gas, sacrifice that as well to give it minus one, minus one. But uh, that's okay. So if they want to pick up Visionary, then they can channel it and get quite a few cards back. But we'll see if they want to channel right now or if they're going to wait and potentially take a beating here. So we get to untap. Just trying to piece together if there's a way for me to kill the opponent with the damage from Felstinger. Seven... Yeah, it doesn't seem likely. So at that point, kind of like activate Hive. 
attack and then potentially play another Felstinger out. So we get to exile two cards here, one with Hive, one with Predator. And I kind of want to try and exile the card draw spells to maybe incentivize the opponent to channel them back, when in reality they are probably better off getting some cheap interaction since they're pretty far behind on board. So maybe we'll go for one of the unique cards like Witness of Future, which I don't care about too much. And then we'll grab a duration. So that's going to force the issue on Visionary. Put on getting back Witness of Future, Expressive Iteration, and Unexpected Windfall, all the card draw effects. So they're definitely lacking some interaction now. Opponent falls to 6. So I wonder if there's a way for us to kill the opponent right now with the damage from Felstinger. Could like play a Felstinger with a trigger on the stack, sacrifice it to our Immerstorm Predator, and then maybe sacrifice a Predator to exploit. Predator dying gets back a 3-drop with our Ascendancy, get back another Felstinger, and the damage quickly adds up. But I don't think we have quite enough here, so we'll just keep it simple and uh, play Falstinger, which can then probably just draw two for us instead of dealing damage to the opponent, which is also a valid line of play. And get back Requisitioner. Okay, and then do I want to play Liberator, or are we afraid of a Sweeper? I'll play it out. Still have Predator as a leftover in case of a sweeper effect. So Duration goes digging. But uh, they need some sort of a reset button. Safekeeping not that helpful. Strangle kills Stinger, might as well sacrifice it. And that will trigger our Ascendancy. And yeah, opponent has seen enough, they'll fall to 5, we get to untap, maybe play another Ascendancy, and then who knows how many Fell Stingers we could loop back from the graveyard. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a nice hand. Apicure into Dispute, can sack the Blood Token and then maybe keep Apicure to sack to Felstinger. And our draw keeps getting better and better with a turn 2 Harvester as another option. Eventually do want some green mana as well for Warchief, but we've got our Glade. And maybe some Treasure Tokens as well. Ascendancy is nice, opponent appears to be a Band Colors. Get a Harvester out there. And then Felstinger, Sanks Apicure. Okay, Inspiring Overseer. Another Warchief. So... Felstinger, Sank Apicure looks good. And then as soon as I play Ascendancy, I could... Sacrifice Harvester to get back our Epicure. Don't really want to trade. So we'll have to take some damage. Did not hit any land drops, so that could be an issue. Another Overseer, okay. Land is good, even our second green. So, do I want to get this Ascendancy going, get back Epicure? Alternatively, can play like Harvester plus Liberator, but getting the Ascendancy going sounds fun. And then I can kill the untapped Overseer, so Felstinger can attack. And then Deadly Dispute, another Sacrifice effect. If our opponent is playing Broker's Ascendancy, we've got that covered with Liberator. Opponent's got a Snakeskin Veil for protection, fair enough. 
Well, in that case, I'm okay trading Felstinger for a 3-2 Overseer. Bunt will probably take it. And then we'll have to decide whether we want to sack a Blood Token end of turn, maybe get us closer to playing or blitzing a Warchief. Janna certainly worth taking out if we get the chance. Taking five. Okay, I think we activate a blood token. And then probably Liberator can go. Since there's no artifacts or enchantments in sight. The land is good. And a Girder Goons, also very nice with Ascendancy in play. So if I Blitz Girder Goons, we can get back our Harvester end of turn. We could also just play War Chief, although Blitzing it is a little bit more exciting. If I just cast Harvester and Dispute Stinger after attacking, I can also get back another Harvester, which in turn gives us a bunch of removal for next turn, if we're still alive. So really have quite a few options. Getting as many Harvesters in play as possible should probably be our goal. So play one. And then attack with Felstinger. And then we can sacrifice it to Deadly Disputes. Maybe shouldn't have played my land yet in case we picked up a tapped one. Get back Harvester. Okay, and then next turn we can Blitz Warchief, activate double Harvester, get back another Harvester end of turn. So an Aspirant should be beatable. Demon's Disciple could also be thrown in the mix. Take eight down to three. But unless our opponent's holding some counter spells here, we might be okay. Knight Clubber, also quite devastating here, killing Aspirant and Overseer. So, what are we afraid of? Maybe like another Snakeskin Veil protecting one of the flyers? Although there's still Demon's Disciple. So, if I go Knight Clubber, I would kill the two One Toughness creatures, Harvester, Harvester, plus Disciple. Still gets us there. So, maybe that's what I'm going for. If I Blitz Warchief, I could also discard a Demon's Disciple with my Treasure and Blood Token to get that back end of turn. But that only really works if we get rid of the Aspirants. So I think Blitzing Night Clubber is fine. And then we'll keep some black mana for Demon's Disciple. And I can sack the Night Clubber to the Disciple as well. And we'll see if there's a response. So we want to harvest her before Demon's Disciple. And yeah, they had the Snakeskin Veil. Let's hope they don't have a second. Otherwise we might be dead. Oh no, they actually have it. Triple Snakeskin Veil. So now I think we're done for. If I play Demon's Disciple, sack Knight Clubber. They lose one of them. But uh, we're still at three, so that's not gonna get the job done, sadly. Man, so close. But they had just enough interaction to stay afloat. Get back a 2-drop, but yeah, Harvester is going to have Summoning Sickness, so can't activate it here. And it's Drew Alliance. Alright, it's too bad. But close game nonetheless. And just very close to stabilizing and completely taking over with Warchief. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's not ideal, since we're missing black and green, but do have an Epicure into Requisitioner, and as soon as we find black mana, 
We can deadly dispute for treasures and card draw. So that worked out. And now we're looking at a turn two deadly dispute, either sacking Apicure, or maybe better yet, the blood token, so we can sack Apicure to Disciple. Opponent's mono blue so far. Get in for one. And then maybe I'm better off just playing a Requisitioner to keep up the pressure. That resolves. Might see a bounce spell, Fading Hope. Send it back. Okay, so next turn, maybe go for Felstinger, Sacrifice, Apicure. Blue White and a Virtuoso. Okay, that explains the opponent's deck. And Demon's Disciple is a great answer, although they might have a slip at the back to protect it. So, how do we plan around that? Well, I can force them to play it by playing the Demon's Disciple, since we need to kind of get rid of that card at some point. Although I could also set up like Chum Block plus Deadly Dispute, or just get a Fable going, since right now the Virtuous is not too threatening, so it's still manageable. We'll go with Fable, since we also need to keep hitting our land drops here. And yeah, it does seem like our opponent might be holding a slip at the back. So maybe wait for them to tap out, even though that's unlikely. Alright, Fading Hope was the one mana instant instead. So maybe they don't have it. Or they just wanted to make sure we were tapped out. But for now the Virtuoso is not dealing too much damage. It's going to be a security bypass, and our opponent tapped all their blue mana. So no slip out the back to worry about. So unless they play another creature, Demon's Disciple is going to be the perfect answer. They might have white mana for a different protection spell, maybe to give it a shield counter. But uh, yeah, Sacrifice gets around it. So Virtuoso threatens to kill us next turn. But we have the perfect answer in hand. What do we want to discard? Warchief is pretty far from getting cast, although could be nice to take over. Maybe don't need Requisitioner. Yeah, Warchief is ambitious when we don't have a single green source, even though Dispute makes a treasure. Um, yeah, let's get rid of it. Ascendancy is nice, and Girdragoons, okay. Play this on black, and then Demon's Disciple, Sack Apicure. And the opponent might be looking at their protection spell, but Boon of Safety is not going to work. Sacrifice gets around shield counters. So they went all in on one creature. Yet it still died. Opponent finds a backup Virtuoso, but that one we can jump for a while. And the plan here is going to be Ascendancy, eventually Blitz Girder Goons, which can also get back our Demon's Disciple. So do I want to sack my Blood token is a question. Yeah, maybe that's actually not a bad idea. Although I kind of like all the cards in my hand. Problem is we don't have green mana for Ascendancy yet. So maybe Felstinger has to go. And I guess we also have our Reflection of Kiki-Jiki, which can eventually copy Demon's Disciple. Harvester, another answer. Okay, so we'll play Harvester, keep up Deadly Disputes, can sack a Blood Token as well here. And then Reflection plus Demon's Disciple might be able to clean things up. Also very good with Harvester. And our opponent sees a writing on the wall, we can keep killing their creatures for the rest of the game at this point. Awesome, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a serviceable hand. Hopefully we get to see a Nightclubber in action here, killing some one toughness creatures up against a green deck. So turn two Liberator, turn three Fable probably. And then Girder Goons, good combo with Ascendancy, potentially allowing us to get back a three or a four drop. Pack leader on two. 
Harvester to maybe answer it. Although I think I still prefer Fable. And then... Might want to go for Double Black for Night Clubber. Could also attack if they block, play Night Clubber. If not, play Harvester. Don't hate that. Could potentially double blocked pack leader with our tutus, but it's not a guarantee. Ooh, Stormseeker. Yeah, that's quite punishing for attacking with Liberator, as our opponent now gets to uh, draw cards, get in for six. But with that start, I was putting them on just mono green instead of red green. Okay, got a discard, and uh, Night Clubber's not looking great. And then Requisitioner, probably the next one to go. So, can play Harvester plus Shambling Ghasts. And then we'll hang back. And then next turn I can maybe put this Ascendancy to good use. Unless a Shaman wants to attack to make a treasure. Maybe that's still okay. Since I actively want to sacrifice like my Shambling Gas, so I get it back when I sack Harvester when we play Ascendancy. Can also activate Liberator now in case an Asika's Chariot shows up, we can destroy it. Pax Betrayal to steal Liberator. Ooh, that's rough. Because then they can kill my Fable with the remaining mana. Yeah, that's uh, not what we wanted to see. So I guess I'll just sacrifice it myself. Killing the same treasure token so we don't waste anything else. Alright, so that still worked. And then I guess we'll just trade Harvester for either Pack Leader or Stormseeker. I guess Stormseeker, maybe. We're at 11. And then want to wait on Girder Goons until we get Ascendancy in play. And then probably okay to send the team unless there's another Stormseeker incoming, in which case I might want to hang back to double block. And then Reflection, gonna be pretty great. Pack Song Pop. Picks up a counter. And pack leader attacks. I'll double block. Save it have a trick. Safekeeping makes it indestructible, so no point giving it minus one, minus one. Just make a treasure. Untap. And then blitz girder goons, copy it with reflection. Attack. And get back a Harvester end of turn, I think. And maybe keep Epicure in hand, or we can play it as an extra blocker just to be safe. Yeah, Harvester looks good. Plenty of blood tokens now. And we get a couple tutus as well, and our opponent packs it in. Awesome. So yeah, Ascendancy, pretty nice with cheap Blitz creatures like Girder Goons. The War Chief, of course, a much more powerful creature individually, but the Blitz costs 6 as opposed to 4. Also makes a big difference. So yeah, overall, trying to make this uh, Riveteer's Ascendancy into a playable card in this deck. Did I accomplish that? That's debatable, but at least we got to see some cool new synergies in action. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.